John Wall and the Washington Wizards had themselves a pretty interesting season as they trolled the hell out of everybody. In the beginning, it seems like this year was going to be a disappointment for them, but around 30 or so games in, they just turned it around, and now they are one of the better teams in the East. Hell, depending on who you talk to, they might be the second best team in the East at 49 wins. The head of the whole thing is John Wall, of course, and if we talk about their present situation as well as moving forward, I'm going to be honest, they don't have all the options in the world to become a better team, but I do think they have a few on top of us banking on their internal improvement through guys being healthy as well as some of their young dudes just simply getting better. I think the Wizards could be in for even more improvement next season. It also will help if they just come into next year focused like they did around the halfway mark of this year. And we can talk about Bradley Beal. This is his first healthy season in a while. You always saw the ability with this guy as an outside shooter, an athlete, and someone who can create his own shot and be that big time second scoring option next to John Wall. And it happened this season. I mean, 23 points a game, efficient from the floor, and he just allows the Wizards to have that extra thing. Because with the amount of attention that John Wall causes from the defense, you have another big time player there, as well as someone who could maybe grow into being like the uh, leader of the second unit, even though he's a starter. I do really like Bradley Beal and where he's going. They have him locked in for the next like five seasons. He's still pretty young. A lot of good things to feel about him. And now if we can get on to Otto Porter. He's about as good as you possibly can be as a small forward while only putting up 13 points a game. One of the most efficient players in the NBA. And when you talk about smart offensive players knowing how to get open. As well as just being hugely receptive of John Wall's uh, pick and roll play and playmaking ability. Porter's just the perfect three for this team. Uh, they are going to have to match his salary, and depending on who's willing to throw like a $20 million contract at him, that could leave them with not too many options in free agency. We will talk more about that as we go along, but I don't think Porter's hit his ceiling just yet. I do think he has room for more improvement, even though I do think he could be a 50, 40, 90 player because he's not too far off this year. Uh, maybe even more than once in his career, honestly. Now, Markeith Morris at the four position, he had potentially his best season because his three-pointer was actually a real thing. He shot 36% from three, being a modern-day NBA four who shows the ability of someone who can really move along the floor well defensively, cover pick and rolls, occasionally switch. The problem was there was always questions about his focus, and apparently around midway through this season, Scott Brooks basically just got into him and said, Dude, you have to care more. You have to play defense. You have to go harder. And it actually worked as Morris. He was just flat out better. And I had questions if he was really a starter in the NBA just because of his lack of focus. He answered the bell this season. And he's also a very good fit with the John Wall and Bradley Beal attack as well. And I think he was... I mean, not the driving force of the turnaround, but he was definitely a huge catalyst in it. Just um, his attitude adjustment throughout the season. And then Marcin Gortat at the five spot. His relationship with John Wall is just as good as you could expect, or as good as you would want from a center. Sets screens really well, knows how to roll. If you leave him wide open for mid-range, he might kill you from there. He's just a solid center. But the question all year with the Wizards was their second unit. And they gave a whole lot of money to Ian Mahimi to be the backup five. He was injured most of the season, but he's come back lately. I think if Mahimi can come into next season and be the healthy center who's damn good defensively, he's been kind of underrated for most of his career, then I think that could be great for them to have a real go-to big man. Also with Gortat's age getting up there. I mean, hey, Mahimi, you might need him more than ever for next season. Kelly Oubre is a big one as well. He had a stretch this year of about a month where he wasn't just an athlete. He was also a really smart player who could know how to get open well. I mean, he's always going to be like a fast break option. But his all-around game really improved. His defense, for one, was actually pretty okay. 
And I think that's the big question for him moving forward is like how good of a defender can he really be? And he was also making his three-pointers, and he was a huge piece for the Wizards bench. His consistency is still a question, but if he could be big for them next season, that would be great. And then finally Bogdanovich, who they traded a, a first-round pick to. I think these three guys, all of them healthy, Ubre with some more focus, Bogdanovich with a training camp with this team, and he's been damn good even without that, they could really give these guys a strong second unit, which has been their weakness this entire season. And as a result of that, the starters have played a ridiculous amount of minutes together, and if you just have more go-to options in the second unit, guys who can contribute uh, just with those three first because they're already on your roster, uh, then that would be great. It would give you more opportunities to just scramble minutes, you know, have some starters in with some bench units. That would be the ideal thing because they don't have all the money in the world because they have to re-sign Otto Porter and things like that. But now we can talk about the backup point guard position. They have Trey Burke. He was actually pretty efficient this year for them, but historically he's just not that great. I do not trust Brandon Jennings to do much of anything just because of how inefficient he is. And he's just not that smart of a player anyway. I think for the backup point guard position, Darren Collison is an option because these guys could potentially have their mid-level exception. They're going to be like right on the cusp of the luxury tax depending on how much it's going to cost for Bogdanovich as well as Otto Porter. And this is what, two videos now where I've suggested someone sign Darren Collison. I think an interesting one could be Patty Mills based on the performance he's having for the Spurs this season. They probably really want to re-sign him, but... I do think the average salary for role players is going to go down this season because teams are going to have to start saving up for the big max contracts they're going to be giving guys in the near future. So I think the days of a guy like Darren Williams getting like $10 million are probably not going to happen. So as a result, I think the mid-level in the NBA is actually valuable now. And like I said before, the Wiz... They're like right there. They might have the full $8 million exception to offer someone to play the backup point guard position. Another one could be Sean Livingston. I mean, he's a perfect fit with the Warriors, and he might just want to stay there because things are just going really well. But, I mean, you throw $8 million at him and you say, we'll play you 25 minutes a game to play the backup point for us. I mean, I think that's the one thing the Wiz could do to really solidify their second unit. But besides that, it's just the defense, you know, because, again, they really had a change of heart almost midway through the season where they just started really playing defense, and there was about a month stretch, maybe even two months, maybe a month and a half, whatever, where they were like the third best defensive team in the NBA. And that's going to be the biggest thing for them is just that focus. Now, if they do have another guy like a Darren Collison, because he's a, my favorite player apparently, to be on the second unit and just have that one other piece and be able to go like nine deep, then you would be turning a weakness that you had this season into a strength next year. Now we can talk about Otto Porter. I think he has another level that he can get to. He really can't create his own shot, or at least he doesn't have to within the Wizards offense. If he could develop that, maybe a pull-up game, improve on his ball handling, that would be very good. He's like 23 years old, so I wouldn't put it past him. I do have one concern. I mentioned it a little earlier. Gortat may be too old next season. You know, NBA centers. Once it happens, it just happens, and you don't always see it coming. He's done a good job of maintaining himself, but, I mean, he's not exactly young anymore. Uh, but still, with all of this, with internal improvement, maybe one legit guy to come off the bench on top of what you already have, could they be a threat to the Cavaliers? Probably not, but I honestly wouldn't be surprised if the Wizards were uh, like the number two team in the East next season, because they're not far away right now. They won 49 games this season, and they were 500, like 30 games in. I mean, if they would have had the laser focus right from the beginning, maybe they would have won like 55, 56 games. That would have given them the one seed. So I think the Wizards are in a good place couple of small free agent moves, re-sign all your guys, hope for some improvement out of Kelly Oubre and Otto Porter. Could be damn good next year.